is the most handsome puppy ever in the whole world. Look at this baby boy. Oh, he did the angel. Yes. Who's the goodest puppy ever? Ever. Oh, I love you. Oh, no. So, are you a plotter? Or a pantser? Or are you maybe somewhere in between? I used to be a pantser. For those who are unfamiliar with either of these terms, platter is pretty obvious, right? It just means you plot out your story from beginning to end so that you know where you're going. Um, some people are way more rigorous about this. Um, but if you're a pantser, then you just get an idea in your head and decide to write and see where it takes you. Um, I feel like this is a really fun, creative thing to do if you're a pantser, but as someone who used to do that, like, I mean, when I first started wanting to write, I had a very romanticized idea of it in my head. Like, I wanted to create a story, and I figured, oh, I'll just, I'll do that. I'll come up with an idea, and I'll just sit and write it from beginning to end, and it'll be perfect. <laughs> um, that never really worked. I never actually completed an entire story. So... For the last several years that I've been actually looking into the art of storytelling and how to make a good story and how to just write a entire manuscript, um, I have realized that I am a planter. What I mean by that is it's for me, if I sit and plot out every single detail from beginning to end, I feel like I've already told that story. I've already written that book. Not perfectly, right? Not grammatically and you know perfectly I don't have all the dialogue and everything like that necessarily but I have enough there that I feel like that story has been told and there's no further adventure to be had um and a lot of the times by the time I do that I just like don't feel very um I don't know I don't feel the same level of achievement I guess personally um whereas like if I sit down and just start writing that works for a, a short while but the problem with pantsing for me, again, this is all about finding what works best for you, right? But um, if I just sit down and do that, then I end up in this situation where if I step away from it for even one or two days, I am likely to forget where I was going with things. If I didn't write anything down, I just have a notebook with the beginnings of a story, I'm not going to remember anything. Um, and if I just have a notebook full of a hodgepodge of information on world building and characters and whatever, that's also going to be incredibly confusing. So over the last year or so, I've discovered the system that works best for me. Um, and I want to share it with you guys today. There's a lot to my process, um, but I'm going to try to keep this video here specifically focused on my method of outlining. And I'm hoping that it'll be helpful to anyone who feels kind of like I do when it comes to plotting versus pantsing. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so to start, we're going to assume that you have your story idea. Um, when I start this process, I don't even necessarily know the ending of the story. But the beginning of this outlining process for me starts with, I will write down the premise of my story. If I do have ideas for any specific scenes, if I have just like the bare bones, I will write a one paragraph, just like one solid chunk of like, this is the beginning, middle, and end. And I'll start with that. The next step that I have is to take those main story beats and start really fleshing them out. So obviously I recommend doing this on a computer. It's going to be a lot easier because this method involves a lot of moving things around and reorganizing. Um, so yeah, I would at least do this on a computer. And I personally use Scrivener. Obviously I'm a new channel. I'm not getting promotions from them, but, um, or revenue, whatever. I'm not getting anything like that from them, but I love Scrivener. I swear by Scrivener. You guys, when I discovered this program, it friggin changed my writing game. So this is not a video about Scrivener, but if you don't have it, it's worth the 50 bucks to just get it and then you have it for life and it's incredible. Um, it's just so organized. But anyway, I'm not trying to make an ad here. So like I said, you flesh out those main story beats. 
Okay, and so you start off, well, I start off with my, like, beginning, and then I go through, and I'll take out, like, the, you can look it up, you can, um, but, like, find, like, the hero's journey, and, like, the main beats of the story in that, or, you know, there's other formats you can use as well, but that's, like, the most common one, especially if you're writing some kind of fantasy, which I am writing an epic fantasy, um, so it worked out great for me. Um, another thing that I had never previously tried writing from, uh, writing one story from more than one character's perspective. So if you're writing from multiple characters, you might want to make separate outlines for each of them. That's just a side note. I didn't even write that down in my notes in here, but that is something that I do. I, if I have multiple characters, I write separate outlines so that I can, Later, when I have them fully fleshed out, I can put them side by side and figure out as I'm separating things into chapters, then I can find out which order each chapter needs to take place in because, you know, this character over here might have to do something before this character discovers this, otherwise it's going to like spoil the reader. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil the reader in my own book, you know what I mean? Um, so it's easier to like see those things side by side and figure them out. Um, just another little tip that I have found very useful. So yeah, so basically the process of outlining for me is very, very organic. Um, you know, so I will, you know, as I'm outlining things, I'll figure out more about my characters. I'll figure out more about my world building, you know, more than the basic ideas that I had to begin with. Because essentially what I end up doing, once I get the main points out there, um, so that I don't forget where I'm trying to get with the ending, especially if it's a very long story that I'm outlining, um, then I will uh, basically have all of these like internal discoveries and, and I'll see these things like playing out through my head like a movie. And so I'll just write the most minimum I can about it, like literal bullet points, notes, whatever, you know, like this character has a conversation with this character. Sometimes I'll write out, like, I won't write a full dialogue. It gets really, like, it slows me down with all the punctuation. Um, but I'll write, like, they have a conversation regarding this. These are the main points of the conversation. You know, um, so and so, and, like, I'll write out every scene in the chapter. And so as I go and flesh it out, then I start seeing where the natural chapters will form. And I'll start actually like separating them out on the page. Um, when I get done with that whole part of the process and I get to the end, then the next step that I take is to go through and weed out any of the world building stuff. If I like, I'll leave a very specific little note for myself, like see this file, right? And I, again, if you've used Scrivener, you know what I'm talking about, but basically it on Scrivener, there's sections uh, where you can put different um, notes for yourself so that you can just like click around and find stuff easily. Um, and so I have different files depending on different type of world building or character pages or whatever. Um, and so I'll take all those little details that don't necessarily have to be in the chapter paragraph itself. Um, and I'll just put like, see blah, blah, blah for this detail here or whatever, but then I'll just still write out all of the, the main beats of each scene in the, each chapter. Um, and then when I have the entire thing done, like I said, unless you have, um, either a second character or you have multiple characters in your story, if you choose to try out this method, um, then like, you know, you, you've, put the outlines next to each other, seeing how everything needs to align up, right? And so then you have the order that your chapters go in. And then again, on Scrivener, each chapter has its own separate file. And so I'll take that paragraph that I have created for that entire chapter and I'll just throw it in the file for chapter 33 or whatever. Um, and that way, when I get to as I go through and I'm actually writing out the entire chapter, not just notes, but I'm actually going through and writing the story, then I have more freedom to jump around. Like if I'm more inspired to write chapter 12 one day and I don't really want to start with chapter six yet because I haven't figured out such and such event or whatever fully, you know, or I'm just like not, I'm just not feeling that particular character that day. It's easier for me to write in a different character perspective, anything like that. It gives you more freedom to bounce around as needed. Um, and 
it's you're not going to forget any of the main points of your story, but there's still such minimum detail there that at least for me as a planter, it's still really fun. There's still like that sense of mystery. There's still that like, oh my God, I can't wait to get to this particular scene or whatever. Um, if you choose not to write it immediately. Right. Um, so I think it's like just a really fun way. And keep in mind, if you do try this method, um, that like, I, I have been doing this. I have done this now a few times with the same, my, my first novel that I'm writing and, um, things still change here and there, but it's all part of the process, right? Like whatever you start with your idea is still going to potentially evolve. There might be entire chapters you decide to get rid of or add to or whatever. Don't get discouraged. It's all part of the process. Like I, for one, cannot wait for your story to join the rest of the world. I love a good fantasy or really whatever you're writing. I just, I love reading a good story. And so if you have a good story in you, even if it does evolve, stick with it because yeah, it's worth it. The world needs to hear it. And just imagine how cool it's going to be when you're holding your book in your hand. So I really hope that this was helpful. I hope that if you have not yet, at least for people who are maybe still struggling, trying to find the best way to outline. This is what I do. And this is so far what has worked the best for me and why I haven't I haven't failed on this story yet why I'm still going with it. And um, I really want that for you guys too. And I know for me, a lot of people on AuthorTube talk very intensely about like plotting everything out. So I get it if that's not really your thing. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. If it was, please stick around, like, share, subscribe, all of those good things. Hit the bell if you are subscribed so you can see when I upload. I also do book reviews and just like I'm here to nerd out with you guys about various things. So if you like any of that kind of content, I hope to see you back here. Thanks for being here. Bye.